Hi there. In the last lesson, we started studying linear functions. In this lesson, we are going to look at linear functions again. This time, we want to compare the gradients of different straight line graphs with each other. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how the graph of y equals ax plus q changes if the gradient changes. Okay. Have a look at all these straight line graphs. They all represent linear functions. What can you tell us about them? Hmm, let me see. If I remember correctly, each of them has a formula that fits. The form y equals ax plus q, where a is the gradient and q is the point where the graph cuts the y-axis. Yes, but for now we will focus on the graphs, not on their formulae. We want to compare these graphs with each other. What is the same about them? And what is it that makes them different from each other? I see something that's the same. They all cut the y-axis at zero. That means they all have a q-value of zero. That's right. When q equals zero, the graph cuts the y-axis at zero, zero, which is the origin. Now, what makes the graphs different from each other? The colors. That's true, but not really important. Let's find mathematical differences. They all go in different directions. What do you mean by different directions? Well, some have a steep slope up this way. And some aren't as steep. They like flat. Look, this one is much steeper than this one. Then there are some going up the other way. Some steeper and some flatter. Okay, so what you are telling us is that the graphs have different gradients. For now, let's focus only on the graphs that slope upwards from left to right. In this graph, look at what happens as the x values increase to the right, the y values also increase upwards, and so the graph slopes upwards to the right. The same thing also happens on the other graphs. As the x values increase, the y values increase as well. I get it. So all these graphs have the x and y value increasing at the same time. That's what they have in common. Now how do we show the differences? I think what we need here is one graph to use as our measuring stick, one graph to compare the others against. Let's use this one. That makes sense. It goes exactly through the middle of these axes. Look, it sort of cuts the plane in two. Okay, let's find the formula for this graph. Do you think you can work it out? Well, it cuts both axes at zero. So it must have a Q value of zero. To find the A value, I will start at the origin. Then I can move one unit up and one unit across to this point. One, one. And look, I can do that again. One unit up and one unit to the right, to the point two, two. So the gradient is one over one, which is one. Well done. Using steps on the graph is a good way to find the gradient. But remember, you could also use the formula for gradient. We just need two points on the graph and then we can put them into the formula. Let me show you. A equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. From 0, 0 to 1, 1, 
we get 1 minus 0 all divided by 1 minus 0, which is a gradient of 1. Now I know what the formula of the graph is. The a value is 1 and the q value is 0. That makes the formula y equals 1x plus 0. That's just y equals x. Spot on! You have found the formula for the graph that mathematicians have chosen to call the parent graph or parent function of the straight line graphs. Now let's see how the other graphs compare to the parent graph. What do you think? Well, we want their gradients, right? So we could work out the formula for each graph and then compare the A values for each graph. Yes, we could do that. Good thinking. We could also find the gradients without finding the full formula of each graph. Do you remember how to do this? Sure. On this graph, if we move one unit to the right from the origin, we have to move two units up to reach the graph. So change in the y divided by change in x is 2 divided by 1. That's 2. Or I could go this way. One unit left and two units down to reach this graph. This graph must have a gradient of negative 2 divided by negative 1. That's positive 2. Do you see that moving further on the y-axis has made the graph steeper? You have to travel twice as far up this way or down this way to get to the next point on the graph. That's what makes the graph steeper than the parent graph. I know what the formula of this graph is now. The a value is 2 and the q value is 0. So y equals 2x plus 0. In other words, y equals 2x. Now, what about the other graph? It seems to be flatter than the parent graph. Let's do the same check on it. From 0, 1 to the right means I have to move only a half up to reach the graph. So the gradient will be a half divided by 1, which is a half. And this is the point 1, a half. So the y value is half of the y value on the parent graph where x is 1 on both of them. So we only travelled half as far up or down as it did on the parent graph. That's what makes the graph flatter, right? That's right. So the formula of this graph is y equals half x. Let's have a look at what we have found so far. This graph has a gradient of a half and it is flatter than the parent graph. The other graph has a gradient of 2 and it is steeper than the parent graph. Right. Now I think we are ready to make a conjecture about the gradients of these straight line graphs. What general rule can you make from what we have seen here? I would say that... Linear graphs that slope upwards from left to right have positive gradients. Great! That certainly is true. But what can you say to describe the steepness or flatness of a graph? If the gradient is something bigger than 1, the graph is steeper than the parent graph. If the gradient is a positive number smaller than 1, the graph is flatter than the parent graph. That sounds good. But are you sure this will work for all graphs? Well, we've tried this idea on two straight lines, and they were both ones with a positive gradient. Right. So we need to check more graphs to see if our conjecture is true for other straight line graphs with a positive gradient. You should find that a graph with a gradient of 3 or 4 is even steeper than this one, and a graph with a gradient of, say, one third or a quarter is flatter than this one. There are some graphs that we haven't looked at. We haven't looked at graphs that have a negative A value. Oh, I forgot about those. Before we go any further, we need to discuss how these differ from the ones with a positive A value. 
As we move from one point to the next on the graph, we see the x values on the graphs increasing from left to right as the y values are decreasing. You just lost me there. See, if we move between two points on the graph of y equals negative x, we notice that the x value is increasing to the right while the y value is decreasing downwards. This will be the same for the graphs of y equals negative 2x and y equals negative a half x. I see these graphs must have negative gradients. To see if you are right, let's test some of them to find out how they compare to the parent graph. But the parent graph is positive. Won't that be a problem? Well, what we can do is set up the graph for y equals negative x. Let's start with the equation y is equal to negative x. When x is 0, y is 0. <laughs> These three points give us enough to make the straight line graph for y equals negative x. Hey, that looks like a reflection of the parent graph. That's a good observation. Let me add some other graphs to our play now. As I do this, compare the graphs to each other and see what observations you can make. Here is the graph of y equals 2x that you have seen already. Now I add the graph of y equals negative 2x. Now I will add the graph of y equals 3x and the graph of y equals negative 3x. Keep comparing these graphs. Here is the one for y equals a half x and here is the one for y equals negative a half x. Lastly, here are the graphs of y equals one third x and y equals negative one third x. Now what comparisons can you make? All the graphs of the negative a value slope downwards from left to right. Yes, that is true. And what else? The graph of y equals negative 2x is a reflection of the graph of y equals 2x. And this one is a reflection of this one. And these are reflections. And these. Excellent! Now see if you can make a generalization about the graphs that are steeper than the parent graphs. These positive ones are steeper, and so are these ones with a negative gradient. So I would say that if the graph has a value of more than 1 or less than negative 1, then the graph is steeper than the parent graph. That is a very good observation. Well done. Now let's look at the flatter graphs. These graphs here have gradients of a half and a third. They are positive. These graphs here have gradients of negative a half and negative a third. They are negative. All of them are flatter than the parent graph. If the graph has an a value that is a positive fraction less than 1 or a negative fraction between 0 and negative 1, then the graphs are flatter than the parent graph. Let me see if I'm getting this. We know of the graphs with a gradient of 1 or minus 1. That's the parent graph and its reflection. Then there are graphs with a gradient bigger than 1 or smaller than minus 1. There are the steep ones. The graphs that have gradients of between minus 1 and 0 or between 0 and 1 are flatter. But what happens at 0? Is there such a thing as a 0 gradient graph? And if so, what does it look like? A gradient of 0 would give you a formula of y equals 0x. Let's find out what the graph looks like by making a table of values. 
So when x is negative 1, y will be 0. When x is 0, y is also 0. I see y will be 0 right through the table, no matter what the x values are. Yes, and do you remember where y always equals 0 on the Cartesian plane? Hmm, oh I remember, y is 0 along the x-axis. So the points are all on the x-axis, it makes it a perfectly flat line. That makes sense, doesn't it? If these all have positive gradients and they slope this way, and these all have negative gradients and they slope that way, then this line on the x-axis must have the gradient in between positives and negatives, which is zero. The line y equals zero has a gradient of zero. It is a horizontal line on the x-axis. The formula for the x-axis and for this line on the x-axis is y equals zero. Yes, that does make sense. I think that's about all for today. Let's recap what we have learned. The parent graph of the straight line family is y equals x. If a is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, the graph is steeper than the parent graph. If a is a fraction less than 1 or greater than negative 1, the graphs get flatter. If A equals 0, we get a horizontal line with 0 gradient. Right, now I think it's time for your task. 1. Describe how the parent function y equals x changes to form the graph of y equals a quarter x. 2. Describe how the parent function y equals x changes to form the graph y equals negative 4x. In today's lesson, we only looked at graphs that went through the origin. We still need to study other straight line graphs that don't go through the origin. In the next lesson, we are going to take our studies of linear functions this one step further.